så mycket hörni. Tack för den fina eh, introduktionen där. Eh, ja, Gantkläder, då måste jag också, jag måste också säga eh, att jag blev utsedd till årets bäst klädda affärsman. 2006 också, jag sa inte det till er, men... men. Ja, exakt. Eh, jag ska prata på engelska, för jag, vis, jag vet att några coacher från tävlingen eventuellt vill komma och lyssna. Så so I'm going to hold this uh, presentation in English, as a few coaches from the tournament was going to come and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, watch it. Uh, I'm, and I'm going to speak about coaching in tennis. Uh, and I, I know that many of you maybe is not playing tennis or is not involved in tennis, but you're doing other things. But uh, I think there's a lot to, to learn uh, in, in coaching uh, that you can take to your daily work. Maybe you get some thoughts. Uh, ah, this was good. And if you can get one thing out of what I'm saying today, it's I think it's, it's good. Uh, so at the moment, I'm coaching uh, uh, a guy called Stan Wawrinka. Uh, 10, 12 weeks per year. I'm running the Good to Great Tennis Academy in Stockholm. Uh, I finished playing tennis uh, many, many years ago, but uh, yeah, I've been coaching professional for, for 10 years now. Uh, before I coached uh, Robin, uh, Robin Södling for four years, uh, he won here 2009 and 2011. Uh, and then I've been coaching professional for, for 10 years. So I'm going to speak about tennis, of course. Um, jumping right into to the presentation, uh, starting with modern tennis. Uh, for me, uh, modern tennis today, if we, s if we look at uh, the, the Swedish Open today in Båstad, uh, I, I call it tennis today is more of a total tennis. Uh, when I used to play uh, many, many years ago, 15, 20 years ago, uh, you had one, um, one guy attacking during one point and one guy defending. Now you see one uh, during one rally you have uh, one, one guy or one girl playing offensive one shot and then the next shot has to play defensive. So I call it more of a total tennis. Players nowadays, they are moving much better. Uh, when I used to play, uh, you know, we are, were a little bit heavier. Uh, players today are a little bit thinner, they are stronger. If you look at Novak Djokovic, you look at uh, Karolin Wozniacki, Simona Halep, they are, you know, they are moving very, very fast and they are thin, but also equally strong. Um, I see a lot of the top players today, they play quite high over the net, that's so they play with a lot of top spin. Uh, when we used to play, we played a little bit flatter, a little bit closer to the lines. So uh, you see Andy Murray, for example, uh, Rafa Nadal, he plays very, very high over the net. Um, it's more money involved in tennis today, so the, the players, they have, they have bigger teams around themselves. They have, for example, one tennis coach, sometimes two tennis coaches. They have one physiotherapist, they have one fitness coach, sometimes one, two fitness coaches, one taking care of the strength training, one taking care of the conditioning. Uh, then they have uh, a manager, you know, so the teams around the players are quite big today. Uh, I heard this year in US Open, the winner is going to receive uh, 3.8 million US dollars only for the winners. So there's a lot of money involved in tennis. So the teams around the players are, are much, much bigger. Uh, so this is what my, my job is all about. Uh, on these pictures you see a guy called Michael Emer uh, to the left and to the right there's a guy called um, Kasper Rud. I choose this picture because Michael Emer played yesterday. I, I, know, I don't know if any of you guys saw him play yesterday. Uh, and today uh, you're also going to see Kasper Rud competing in the quarters in, in, uh, in on the center court. This picture was taken 2012 after the European Junior uh, Championships final. Uh, the guys are at this uh, picture, they are 14 years old. Uh, we I know today that the average age when the players uh, break into the top 100 uh, is uh, 24 years. So this leaves me as a coach for Michael with 10 years uh, of questions like, uh, you know, what should Michael be doing during, during these 10 years? Uh, what should he uh, avoid? Where should he practice? Who should he practice with? Who should travel? Who should finance his travel? So this is what my job is all about when I'm taking on younger players. You know, It's about maximizing the potential 
to do the right decisions during these uh, 10 years. Uh, you know, I, I, run, I run the Good to Great Tennis Academy together with uh, Niklas Kulte and Michael Tillström today. We have 50 promising juniors, uh, more or less at the age of 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. So this is what I, this is what my daily work is all about, you know, trying to figure out the plan for the next 10 years. I know that the, that the, the average age to break into the, to the ATP tour is 24, on the WTA tour, the women's tour is a little bit less, but there's eight, 10, sometimes 12 years, you know, to fill with, uh, with content. Uh, for me, to create good athletes, it's about uh, two things. Um, uh, it's about the talent, um, and I'm going to go into that a little bit, what I define as, as talent in tennis. And it's about the environment where you put the talent in. And in tennis, it's the talent is, of course, the player, and the environment is the, the training and the coach. That's the, that's the environment. So for me, this is the two, uh, two most important things when I look at talents. Uh, first, I would like to define talent uh, because I think everybody is born with uh, with a gift. Everybody is born with skills. Uh, every everybody can be great uh, as long as you find the, the passion in your life. Uh, I always hear many times when I'm traveling around tennis tournaments in Sweden or in Europe or wherever is uh, in the world. It could be the States or that you know this guy is very talented or. No, he's not talented enough, and uh, you know I'm I'm always very very careful with uh, uh, judging when when the the players are too young. You know, for me talent is something completely different, and I'm going to explain a little bit uh, uh, about that. Um, talent for me, uh, talent for me is the ability to learn, the ability to learn, and the desire to practice. For me, talents, they are hungry to learn, even on tough days, even when it's raining outside, even when the coach is not watching. You know, they have an inner passion. They have a drive, you know, to always, to always try to become better. Uh, that's, for me, is the, the talent. Then sometimes you see skillful players like Michael Eumer. He has a good hands. He, had, he has a good technique. You can see this. He's born with a gift. He's born with skills. But the older the player gets, the more important is the hard work the passion, the drive to, to, to work a little bit harder when I'm not watching, you know, when it's raining outside, you see a guy running. That's for me is talent. So many times I've seen, I've seen uh, not so skillful players when I'm 12, 13, 14 years old and I see other coaches, they laugh a little bit, but you know, I see something in their eyes uh, and that for me is talent, you know. They have, I s I, they have the mental, physical assets to improve and, uh, without losing motivation, even when it, uh, it's getting tough. They learn from mistakes and they learn fast. That's also a talent. You know, you explain to, to Michael, for example, that oh, you need to improve your four and why don't you go a little bit higher on, on your backswing instead of lower. And I, I just uh, I make him do it one time and, and he immediately picks up. That's for me. It's also a talent, you know. With some players, you have to, to do it over and over, and you have to repeat, repeat, and it's tough to learn. But, but the talent and play, they learn fast, you know. And they're hungry to learn, and they, they, they bring input to the training a lot, you know. And they like this, uh, I call it the deep, uh, deep practice sessions, when the, when, the, when, the, when the focus is the right, you know, when no one, one, no one else is, um, uh, is interfering with the practice. They like to be locked in and focused, you know, that's also, for me, it's, it's talented. So I look a lot at the talent. These three are three three players that I was a little bit involved in. Uh, Robin Söderling, I was coaching him for four years. Obviously, we had good results. He was the, his best ranking was number two in the world. And then we have in the middle Stan Wawrinka. Uh, we've been working together the last four years, and he was number three in the world. And then we had Grigor Dimitrov, uh, also from Bulgaria. We we practice uh, together a, a very short time, but three totally different personalities. One is very introvert, very shy. One is a little bit more extrovert. He likes uh, yeah, uh, to talk a lot. He's very social. And one is a little bit in between. For me, it's impossible to coach these three personalities the same way. So adaptation for me in coaching is very, very important. 
uh, they have different uh, playing styles. One is very aggressive, one is playing with two is playing with one hand, one is playing with two hands, so it's impossible to, to, to coach the same way. Um, first time I meet the player, uh, this again is uh, Michael's brother Elias, who is also very, very talented, who I was working with since he's 11 years old. First, I like to evaluate the player, and as I said in the beginning, you know, I try to get to know the player a little bit, try to get to know the family, the hobbies, um, uh, the friends, you know, the try to get the, the culture, the background, you know, the player a little bit, try to get the person, try to get to know the person a little bit behind the tennis player. And then, of course, uh, try to ask a little bit, what's the goal for, for in this case, Elias Imer? goal might be to to be a professional player the 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 goal might be to to go to a u.s college you know but it's i think it's important to to set long-term goals and, and short-term goals uh, and then you start to create the plan i see a lot of uh, a lot of athletes today uh, especially in the world of tennis they they lack uh, they lack they lack a little bit structure the team around the the, the player they, they lack the the red line that's something to follow and they lack a plan so for me, it's very, very important uh, to, to have a plan, a, a short-term plan for a few weeks, maybe six months, long-term plan for four or five years. You know, where, where this is now 2018, where are we going to be in 2022? It's going to be changed one million times, but I think it's important to have a leading star somewhere. Where are we in four years? You know, So that, for me, is very, very important. And then you go to work. So I, I like to call it uh, the 360 degree. You look at uh, you look at the tennis, you look at the school, you look at the financial situation, you you know look at the parents. Everything around the player is important. It's not only about the tennis. It's so many mu so much more than that. You know, it's 365 days out of the the year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, many times I I, I get asked the questions. Um, so okay, uh, at the academy, how how many how many how many hours per day do you practice with a with a guy or a girl who is 14, 15 years old? And my answer is, we practice 24 hours a day. But we practice we we play tennis maybe three hours a day, and then we do fitness one hour a day. That leaves us with another 20 hours a day. But it's important to be an athlete for for those 20 hours, not only for four hours. You know, to think about the recovery to think about the education you know it's important to to be to be thinking uh, about that okay uh, going into the tennis a little bit um, i know that you're not tennis players but uh, anyway um uh, a little bit my philosophy about the training uh, i think that if you're well prepared uh, you have written down the exactly what you want to do, the exercises that you want to do, how long you want to do each exercise. I think it rubs off of the player also. If you're there five minutes before you start, if you start to practice at nine o'clock, you're there five minutes before. I think you know you show the player a little bit uh, the standard. So for me, it's very important to be well prepared. I don't like to 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 be arrive uh, one minute before the practice or thirty seconds before the practice or even late. I, I I really really don't like that. So I like to be on time because I think that's that's rub rubs off of the player. I like to work very very simple, but with simple I mean very very dedicated. If you do a simple drill like playing cross court, you know I like to be very focused. I like to have the right atmosphere, the right environment on the on the court. So you can do one very simple little drill like playing cross court in 30, 40 different ways, you know. But for me, it's very important to do the simple, fundamental things to perfection. Uh, I like like to use targets, and with targets, I mean different zones on the court or different different cones that you that the player needs to hit because I think it uh, yeah it's also great a good environment, you know, to to have targets all the time. So I like to use targets a lot when I do my drills. Focus, of course, from the first minute. Uh, I think the first time that my player hits the ball, uh, the day or that practice sets the standard for the rest of the two hours or three hours or four hours that you have the session. So for me, it's very important to see the first time they hit the ball and to, to be very close to the player, to have the instant feedback, you know, to, to really feel like you are there. That's, uh, that's very important. And then, of course, you're going to see today, if you watch the tennis today, you're going to see that the serve is very important in modern tennis today. The returns are very important today. 
90% of all the points is finished within the four first shots in tennis today. Meaning serve, return, or serve, return, first shot after the, s the serve, or return and first shot after the, the, the return. So I like to, to, to practice a lot the first four shots, you know. 90% of all the, 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 the rallies are, are ended within four shots. The best players, they don't miss. Juniors, the best juniors in the world, the best pros, they don't miss. So I, do, I don't like to that my players are missing. You know, I get very upset if they miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, the simple, basic. Uh, I don't know if you know tennis, but early preparation, feet in the right position, good contact point with the ball, good follow through. You know, four very easy, s simple things. But uh, you know, you can do it many, many different ways. But I don't like to that the feet are pointing in different direction or bring back the racket early or if you finish wrong. You know, I like the the, the simple things. But if you do it correct, I think it's good. And I believe in, in also the player, because when they play on the center court, the coach is not on the court, the coach is in the stands. So sometimes I like to, to give uh, feedback, but then I take a step away. I let the player work himself and think a little bit for himself. So I don't give feedback all the time, you know. I like to take a step back and let the player uh, try. And then I can ask, okay, how did you feel when you did that? You know, ask a lot of questions, but not all the time uh, feed the player. Then again, effective training. I said, okay, we practice uh, maybe tennis four hours a day. We practice uh, fitness one hour a day. Uh, I could practice tennis eight hours a day. I could, I could really, uh, you know, kill my players uh, in in two days. That's not a problem. But what if we could practice a little bit less but do it very, very effective? So instead of practicing five hours a day, we practice three and a half hours, but we do it with intention, we have a plan, we have a structure, depending on where in the year you are. Right now, in July, we are in the middle of the tennis season. We have done already um, three Grand Slams this year, Australian Open, French Open, and Wimbledon. So we're going into sort of the second half or of the year. So n right now, it's not so good to, to have a, a, like a big, big training block because the players are a little bit tired. Uh, we're going into the US, US Open Series. Uh, next week, I'm, I'm traveling to Washington to, to practice with, with Stan again. So right now, it's, it's, not, so, it's not so good to, to have a big, big training block because they're already tired. But I think it's very important to, to sometimes uh, practice hard, sometimes practice a little bit less, to not always do the same, not always the same. Try to, to think a little bit outside the box in terms of hours, rate, load, and etc., etc. So try to, to think about that. That's for me, it's very important. And again, what's the goal for the player? Create a plan, go to work, but do it effectively. And then after some time, six months, it could be one year, you evaluate what went wrong. Why didn't we reach our goals? What can we do better for the next time? Many, Too many players, too many athletes, they don't have the plan, they, they don't do this. This is very simple, this is something that you do every day, but, you know, for me, uh, too many players, they, they, don't, they don't do this. I define a, a good coach, finally, someone who can meet different personalities, someone who can coach uh, younger players, female players, male players, older players, younger players. When I started my coaching career, I was, I was coaching a lot of uh, younger players and, and amateurs because this is how you can develop as a coach. Because with younger players, you, ha you really have to, to, to explain why you do different things and why you start uh, the backswing here or you start the backswing here. Amateurs the same because they are not so skillful, you know. So you really, I think it's very important. Someone who thinks long term and, and someone who has a, something what I call a growth mindset. Not thinking about uh, always winning today or winning uh, tomorrow. Think about the year is in tennis is 11 months. Y perhaps you play professional tennis for 20 years, you know. So not always think about the result. Think a little bit long term. Some a good coach for me is also a good listener. But in my world, it's also very important to be honest. We, we have a different working relationship in, in tennis in my world. 
because I am the boss of my player, right? I'm the boss of Stan, but he is paying my salary. You understand? So sometimes I have to tell the guy who's paying my salary that you're doing a crap job, you know? So I have to be very, you know, I could lose my job if I, if I, um, if I criticize him too much. But that's one of the things I think why we had also great success together, me and Stan, for example. Because the first time that we met together in, in, in Geneva, five years ago, the first thing that he told me in our first meeting was that, Magnus, I want you to be 100% honest with me. No matter if it's things on the court that, I, that you think I could do a little bit differently or things outside the court that I think you should do, I should do a little differently in order to be a better tennis player. So honesty has always been very, very important for me. But maybe some coaches are too afraid to be honest to the player because they're afraid to lose their job. Someone who always has a purpose of the training, I, I talk about that, a good coach for me is always well prepared, always had it, have, have his uh, things written down, what he wants to do. Uh, and someone who is thinking always about the player first before himself, someone who is also there more when it's not going so well. It's very, very easy to be there when things go well. When you start to win tournaments and you start to win matches, you, you, you get famous or you win title, it's very important. Then a lot of people will be your friend. But to build a relationship between the coach uh, and the player is to be there more when it's not going so well. For example, now Stan has been injured for, for, for uh, um, almost a year. He was number three in the world when he got injured. He won three Grand Slams. Now he's coming back. His ranking dropped to... 250 in the world. So now he's just trying to come back, you know. So it's very important to be there a little bit more when, when, when it's needed. That's how you build the relationship between the player and the coach. So, talent for me in tennis, desire to practice, the ability to learn, to learn fast, uh, and to be there. Um, yeah, to go to work when no one else is watching, when it's raining outside, when the coach is not really there. That, for me, is really a, a, a talented player. Uh, the environment, for me, is also important. The, to, to see the individual, to see the human being before the tennis player, to coach the individual. Everybody is different. Think about that. To create a plan and a structure. To, to go to work and to, to, to really honor simple fundamental work, but to, to work like a, think like a gardener and to work like a carpenter, to be really, really specific with all the details, where you put your feet, where you have the contact with the ball, the follow through and so on. Uh, effective training, think about that also. Not do all the time the same, but how can we do it a little bit better? Uh, and to be there a little bit more when it's not going so well. And then, of course, it's things like uh, possibility to play a lot of tournaments, uh, to have a lot of uh, to have a lot of s sparring around you. That's also very important to in 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 order to for a 14, 15 year old to be really, really a good player. It's important to have a lot of courts and a lot of players around yourself. And then I've al I've also seen uh, one critical part is when when a, when a player becomes start to win the European Championships when he's 15, 16 years old and there's a lot of managers coming in, there's a lot of money involved in tennis uh, and, and I, I many times I see maybe managers not giving the, the, the right uh, advices. So that's something that I also as a coach, I, I try to prohibit my, my players f to, to sign too many agreements when they're young, you know, to be, to be really clean and to, to always think about the how to become a better player. That's for me is most important. Then if you start to win uh, professional tournaments, then it's another story, you know. Then you want to make money. But in younger ages, to try to, to, to stay away from that, to think only about the plan and what you have to do. Uh, education, your, your family, your friends, and to, to have a safe environment. That's for me, is most important. To finish off this beautiful morning, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit inside of my, my work with Stan. Uh, a few reflections from working with Stan. Um, 
when we started working together, he was number 20 in the world. He was already a very, very good player. Um, we reached, uh, we worked four years together and he became number three in the world, his highest ranking. We, we He won three Grand Slams, which was amazing. And he would probably have done it without me. So it's not because of me, but just to give you a few reflections. He's, he's watching a lot of tennis. And this is something that I, I try to enforce a lot of, of my younger players as well. Try to watch a lot of tennis because you learn a lot. He's very updated with with rankings, with results. He's following not only the ATP, the professional tour, he's, he's, he's watching the, the junior tour, he's watching, yeah, he knows a lot about, he knows all the rule changes before me. He's very updated with tennis, so he's very passionate about it. He's sometimes able to step out of the world of tennis, and with that I mean, um, he has the ability that I didn't have. I was very, you, when you're a professional athlete, you're very locked into, in, in you're, you live in a bubble. You know, you're a little bit protected from the outside of the world. But he's, he has the ability to sometimes step out of the professional life. And we can have a, a, a grown-up discussion about stand the professional athlete inside the bubble. It's very tough to understand, but I think this is, this is a big, big reason why he won three Grand Slams. That we can have a, a conversation about where, where are we right now, where, where do we need to be with Stan, the, the athlete, you know. He, he's very open to, to changes, he's very, he's very open to, 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 to negative feedback and, you know, how can we do it a little bit different. I was very much I was in the bubble, living all the time, and not listening too much about advices. So th this is an ability th that he has. He doesn't get stressed when he's resting from from training. It's also, one ability that I didn't have, I was practicing a lot, a lot, a lot every day. And if I was resting one day from practice, I was thinking, oh, I lost my my forehand and back, and I'm I'm going. Oh, I get very very stressed. But he can he can he's practicing very hard, but he can also have two days off. It's like Magnus, relax. You know, it's it's okay. It's gonna be while I'm more like, ah, oh, we we need to practice because the competitors are practice. But he he was, you know, he's he knows that you know, it 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 will come back. Also, very very uh, important asset when you're a professional um, athlete. Very structured periodization of the year. As I said, the plan. You know, sometimes you practice hard, sometimes not so hard. Um, he shares the same fitness coach as Roger Federer. So I've had a little bit inside of how he's working as well. And the same with, with Roger, you know, very, very, he knows exactly every day what he's going to do. If he's in New York, if, if he's traveling for charity work in Africa, if he's going to for, for something in the States, I, for sure there's training, there's planned training every day. Very, very structured periodization of the year. He loves the simple drills again. Many times before the Grand Slams, he likes he, th he he comes to Magnus. Uh, I ask him before the, the training, do you feel like you want to to work on something specific before this, uh, you know, uh, next match or whatever? You know, I say, Magnus, please, can we do the simple things that we always do? And that for me, is I get very warm inside when he say that because that's that's how you the trust he, he he's trusting that what we are doing the simple things. He knows, he understands that the simple things will win matches for him. He's physically very, very strong. I like to say that he's a diesel truck that can accelerate like a Formula One car. You know, he's, he, can, he's, he can go for a very, l very long time, but he's also super fast in his first step around the court, you know. Uh, but he has the same issues when, it, when as younger players, when it comes to, to mental, um, mental things. My, one of my uh, privileges is that I can work with Stan on, on Saturday and Sunday, and then on Monday I, I am back home working with a 14-year-old girl. And sometimes it, it, I'm, I'm amazed that you know, I, I repeat the same, th same things on Saturday, Sunday, that I do on Monday, Tuesday, in terms of, you know, um, um, uh, I lost my backhand, Stan can sometimes say. I lost my backhand, I don't feel it, uh, you know. And then on Monday I have the same, I, I can't feel my, my, so it's the same sort of mental things. You know, he's also a human being. He, he also has self-doubts, you know. Sometimes he, he thinks that, you know, he cannot put one ball in the court and there's a lot of talks and, you know, same mental things with professional players as younger players. Same issues. Okay, to finish off, I did a, a short movie to summarize a little bit what 
I spoke about. I'm not a Hollywood um, producer, so please, it's not the it's not the perfect movie, but I, I did it myself. So. Okej. Okay. Tack så jättemycket för att ni kom hit.